Hi everyone, it's Momo, and today um, I'm going to be making my Bind It All wall decor project that I had posted on my blog. I've posted two of them so far, so I'm going to go ahead and show you pictures for those of you who haven't seen it. So those are the two that I made, and um, what I'm going to be doing is I had a few requests on how I made them. Um, and if I could do just a video tutorial and things like that. So I'm going to do it for you guys today. And the first thing that you're going to need is some kind of chipboard. For this particular project, I am actually using um, real chipboard. Normally what I use is, um, like for my mini albums and things like that, I use like the back of Pepsi, um, I'm sorry, the boxes for the Pepsi can, cereal boxes and things like that. Because um, you cover them on both sides, so it kind of... Um, holds up a little bit more but for this kind of stuff that you're gonna be hanging on the wall and it's gonna be a little more shown and things like that I did want to use real chipboard and um, you can get it online at tons of places for real and expensive but I wanted uh, the other day I was just walking by Michaels and I was like I want chipboard right now I didn't want to wait for the shipping and things like that so I got I picked up this um, graphics chipboard it's medium weight and it brings six 12 by 12 sheets and I paid $2.99 for it Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started, and uh, I already cut down my chipboard, and I cut it out at two and a half by six piece, uh, I'm sorry, two and a half by six inch pieces, so I did three pieces. You can do as many as you want, depending on what you're using it for. Um, the one that I made for Sarah and the one that I made for my grandmother, I used three pieces. Um, my grandmother's was a little bit more square, because I was actually putting photographs on there, and the one for Sarah, I did the long way like this one. It's just a little bit, hers was a little bit bigger um, because I was just doing the live, love, and scrap, which is her name. So um, I did those a little long and rectangular like these. But, you know, just depending on what you're using it for, you can make a calendar out of it or a frame and things like that. So you can kind of shape the chipboard the way that you want. And then uh, your next step after you cut down your pieces is you're going to go ahead and cut down your pattern paper. Now... What I'm going to do is I'm going to cover um, my pieces using this purple first and because um, that's my favorite color. And then after that, I'm going to cut a mat using these uh, this pattern paper, which I really like. I can't remember for the life of me where this is from. I want to say this is from um, um, My Mind's Eye, and it's one of those really humongous uh, stacks of paper I just I lost the cover of the stack so I have no idea where it comes from I just have like the rest of the stack left so I'm gonna get this pattern paper and actually mat it on so what I'm gonna do is um, you just since I already know that this is two and a half by six I'm just gonna get my paper trimmer and I'm gonna do two and a half and then cut it at the six and you're just gonna cut them I don't cover the backs of mine. You can if you want to, just depending on where you're going to hang it or what you're going to use it for. If you want to uh, cover the backs, you can. I'm not. I'm just going to do the fronts. So I'm just going to cut another strip at two and a half. And I like to do my mats normally um, a quarter of an inch smaller. So with my pattern paper, I'm going to go in at two and a quarter. And then I'm going to cut it out at five and three quarters. So I have all my strips already cut out and then what I've used to adhere this um, for the last two has been some Scotch Quick Dry and I just like the way that it sticks. You can use ATG, you can use anything to adhere this down, it just depends on your personal preference. And I like to line my edges first because that way when you move your paper around it kind of smears it all the way to the edge and gives it a good seal. And then I just squiggle it in the middle just line it up and this is quick dry so you got to do it quick 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 perfect so there we go so we've got our little um, our first little plates already covered up and then I'm just gonna go ahead and do the other two so I've got all three of mine covered up and then I'm gonna get my pattern paper and this I am gonna do with my ATG gun and I'm going to um, adhere it to the center of all of them and that's just to create a pretty um, mat here with the pattern paper. See? So it gives it kind of like a different look. 
Okay, so I've gone ahead and put down my pattern paper and I just love fun, bright colors. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna sponge very lightly around the edges using some brown ink. And that's because my pattern paper kinda has that um, inked look to it. So I wanna just enhance that look by inking around the edges. Okay, so I've got all three of my pieces already inked up, and I did this last time, and this is still the same sponge from the um, from the last time, and I'm just going to cut off the tip, and there you go. So that's already two uses with one sponge, and I bought those at the, uh, at the dollar store, so um, the makeup sponges really go a long way when it comes to inking. Okay, my next step is getting my bind it all, so I'm going to go get my bind it all, and I'll be right back. Here's my bind it all and I'm going to go ahead and bind and what we're going to do is we're going to bind at the bottom of the top, oh I don't know if you guys can see this, there we go. We're going to do at the bottom of the first one, we're going to do the top and the bottom of the middle one and then just the top of the third one and that's so that we can bind them all together and you want to get started, let me just put everything together, it's really important, the binding is important um, because of the way that it punches out the holes, if you don't do it a specific way it won't line up for um, for when you guys are actually going to do the binding okay so we're going to start with our um, our top layer and we're just going to go ahead and put it in I've determined already where the center is and um, so I'm going to go ahead and bind it So there we go, that's the bottom. And you wanna bind it before you do any embellishments because you wanna make sure that you know where your binding is gonna be before you put on the letters and flowers and little things like that. So I'm done with the bottom. And then what you wanna do for your next one, okay, you don't wanna put it in, like let's like now we have to bind this top part, you don't wanna put it in like this, you wanna put it in like this, okay? Okay, I'm sorry, my um, ca com uh, my camera ran out of a, a memory in the middle of this whole video. So um, I just wanted to go over the cutting with you guys just one last time before, um, before we move on just to make sure that you guys understand. So here we go, this is the first one, the second one, and the third one. And um, so the third one, the first one we punch with the uh, paper facing the front. The second one, the top, the one that's going to match with this one is going to go with the, paper, the designer paper facing the back. And then the bottom is going to go front, front back, front back. And then this one is going to go in the back. So that way, even if you're off a little bit, like I was off about a quarter of an inch with the centering it on my bind it all. So um, it'll always match up. Each one of these will match up and make sure that your binding is right. So, um, and if you're perfect with the punching and you always get it right, then you're not gonna have a problem with this. Um, but I did and I've, done, I've had a problem all three times, so I wanted to make sure that I just, for those of you who are a little bit like me, that'll be a really good trick is to do the front back, front back. So we're all done with our bind it all um, for right now. So I'm gonna get my O-wires. And for this particular project, I noticed that the best size for the O-wire should be a half of an inch. Um, I've done it smaller because I have an O-wire that's a little smaller than that, um, but it just, it's really tight and it doesn't let the actual sign like move at all. So, because it gets like right close to each other. So half an inch is the best one. And I know that each one of these, I'm gonna need two sets that have the six. So I already know that I need six, so I'm just gonna go ahead and trim them. So we've got our O wires ready to go. And then in order to put them in, what you want to do is I know that these two match, so you have you have to put them face to face like this and then bind it through. And then you're going to get your bind it all and I have it I have it perfectly on there at the half an inch and I'm just going to put it right in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and close it up. And there we go, super cute. 
And then we're going to get the next one and we're going to put it face to face just like the last time. And we're going to get our O wires and run it through and then put it in again. And that's it my friends, easy peasy to make your sign. Okay, so now that we've gone ahead and bind and did our, done our bind it all on our sign, our next step is actually um, doing the two top um, little holes with the eyelets, and that's in order to hang the ribbon in which it's going to hang, um, in which it can hang from on the wall. And I'm just using my bind it all, and I'm using the bigger of the two hole punches, and I've already have it where I wanted it positioned exactly and I wouldn't want to do it right you're gonna do it as close to the edge without being right on the edge I'm having problems talking today I'm saying things like three or four times <laughs> like the same thing I'm trying to explain myself I'm normally really good at explaining but today's just not a good day Okay, so I've got my two holes already punched out and I'm just putting my eyelets in and I'm using some purple eyelets. And then I'm just going to bind it. And there we go. So we've got our little um, eyelet set in at the top. And I'm going to use some purple ribbon. And I'm going to run it through. And then once you've got it run through, you're just going to tie a knot. And if you want to do two, you can just to give it a little bit more bulk. And that's so that it doesn't go through the eyelet. There you go. And we're just going to do the same thing on the other side. And we've got our little sign up on the ribbon and now it's time to embellish so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head off I'm gonna cut some stuff up of my Cricut and I'm gonna be right back so we're back and I'm all done embellishing my sign all I did was I cut out made by Momo I did uh, the shadow and the actual letters and I did that using my Alphalicious cartridge and this is, uh, was cut out at two inches each of the letters and then I got the little butterfly from Creator Critter because I think it's super cute. And I cut that out at one and a half inches. I did the layers and I put two little blings on the butterfly. And then I just did the glue dots in the center so it pops up. So that's my sign. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys, you know, make something similar to it. Or if you guys can try it out if you have a bind at all. And um, if you do link me, send me an email, put, send it to me on Facebook. Um, put it on my, you know, link it to my blog, you know, I would love to see what you guys make and the little extra touches that you guys add with your creativity and um, so that's it. Oh, I have tomorrow's uh, Made by Momo challenge uh, over on my blog because it's Tuesday so there's a new challenge going up tomorrow. Um, so if you're over on YouTube, jump over to madebymomo.blogspot.com. If you're watching from my blog, come back tomorrow morning. Or I'm a night owl, so I normally put it up at night. So if you stay up late enough, you guys will see it tonight. And um, so I'll have that going on tomorrow. And I also have, I was asked to be part of, of a giveaway for the original scrap box. So they're, giving, oh, they're actually giving away the grand prize is an original scrap box. It's humongous. It's a big piece of furniture, and it opens up. And you can store all your scrapbooking stuff and everything like that. I have photos. Um, I'm going to, I have photos over on my blog um, as well on that. And then they're doing some preliminary giveaways. So right now you can enter to win the big cutting board. It's uh, 24 by 36, which I think is the size of this mat that I have from Martha Stewart. So it's pretty big and it's awesome. And then if you win the cutting board over on my blog, you're going to get an entry to win the actual original scrap box in the color of your choice so um, it's a pretty awesome giveaway so check that out if you're over, watching over from YouTube go to madebymomo.blogspot.com you don't have to have a blog to enter you just have to um, follow the original scrap box on, on Facebook and tell me what your favorite um, item is on their store that's it that's all you need so um, that's it I hope you guys enjoyed today's video thanks for watching bye